Hey guys, Stephen Turner here with Turner Fishing. Welcome back to the channel. So, fall is upon us. Whether we like it or not, September, the end of August, are honestly some of the hardest times of the year to find and catch quality crappie. Now, when we think about a fall transition, it can start as early as the first nights that are starting to get cooler, which we just had last week, where our nights were actually dropping into the 60s. Now your daytimes are probably still going to be high in the high 80s and the 90s some parts of the country. But as soon as those temperatures start dropping into the 60s, your fish are going to start transitioning. You know, it may not feel like the fall time, what I call false fall, which we're going through right now. I mean, the leaves even, hasn't even started to change or anything, but we've had a lot of cooler nights here lately. So what does this mean? And on today's video, we're going to be going over the mistakes people make at the beginning of fall and even into the fall season. We're going to jump into this video by explaining what I mean by the fall transition. Now, this is an early fall transition. I'm going to make another video covering the entire fall transition here in a couple days. But as soon as that nighttime temperature drops to anything that's, you know, cooler than above average, what starts to happen is your bait fish, shad primarily, are going to start moving from their deeper habitats uh, as soon as that nighttime temperature now it's not going to be a, a you know oh my god it's 60 degrees let me run to the back of this creek it's it's going to gradually happen over the course of you know the rest of september into october and even some of november there's still some bait that's going to be moving from deeper water into these creeks and once you have bait moving the larger crappie are going to follow them and what you're going to end up having is what we have here down on lake murray right now is you know all the brush piles that were productive during the summer or the docks that were productive during the summer you're going to have a lot of the offspring from last year and this year so you're going to catch a lot of six seven eight inch fish and you're like dang where'd all the big ones go so the first mistake that i see a lot of people actually make during this fall transition is you you've got to get out of the habit of fishing your honey holes i know that doesn't make a lot of sense you know you go to this dock and you catch a bunch of fish all year long and i understand that but once you get out there during this transition you're going to this dock and you're barely catching any or you're catching a lot of small fish and a lot what a lot of people do not do this time of year they're going to run the same stuff that they were running in the summer you know for me personally that was 15 foot brush piles this summer 15 foot brush piles just were one of the biggest keys to the whole summertime bite to find better quality fish now if i go out there right now like today and i run my pattern of 15 foot brush piles what i'm going to end up doing is going through a lot of small fish and i might catch you know eight or nine keepers that are just barely legal for the state of south carolina which is eight inches now, in order to avoid this, what I suggest, now I know a lot of you are weekend, weekend anglers and you don't have a lot of time like I do to go out there and actually look for these fish. Now, what I be, mean by that is once you get out on the water, you check a couple of your piles. If it's smaller fish or no fish, what you've got to do is you've got to take the time to side scan, down scan, or use your forward facing sonar and and to cover your area like if you're fishing a dock figure out where that dock was that was productive in the summer if your dock was on the end of this point right here and it was productive these fish are moving with the bait there was probably bait around this point bait around this drop off bait around this river channel now this bait is moving into the creek because the nighttime temperatures dropped and that just sends a light bulb into these baits fish's heads you know i need to go in this creek so the crappy are going to move now they're not, not going to move far but once you're out there if you can take an hour or two out of your day like you got a six hour fishing trip i understand you know you want to be fishing not looking for fish but at the same time if you take the time to find the fish you're going to have a better day out on the water versus just trying to fish your honey holes and hope for the best you know we we pay a lot of money and invest into a lot of gear to be able to locate these fish and 
utilizing that on every fishing trip you know should be the goal of purchasing whatever you have now if you don't have anything i do have a video coming out probably in the next two days that's going to cover a way to find these fall crappies and you don't need any sonar at all now the second biggest mistake you know it's either going to make you mad or you're going to understand hey steven's right maybe i should think about that and that's honestly fishing dead water this time of year bait fish in your area that you're fishing is so vital that if you cannot find bait fish in i would say a, a 30 to 50 yard stretch around the area that you want to fish you need to find a new area like if you scan you know the first half of the creek and you haven't seen any bait balls and i'm not saying, like you might find one bait ball and one bait ball you know you might find a group of crappy eating that bait out there in the middle but i'm talking you need to find like three or four good sized bait balls in this creek or the, on this point or in this section of the river that you're fishing whichever your case may be if there's no bait fish then there's probably no predator fish you know you're not going to have your bass you're not going to have your crappy you're not going to have your your bluegill up shallow eating the minnows so i see a lot of people they tend and it goes co and co with fishing your honey hole if you if you roll up to your honey hole and there's two or three bait bait wads around your brush pile then there's probably a good amount of crappy still at your honey hole it just haven't transitioned yet but once you get to the point where you're scanning half your creek and there's just nothing there there's no reason to be there now once you get to the back half of that creek and you start seeing a lot of bait then that's when you want to go scan those docks over there scan for a brush pile or a lay down or look for lay downs on the bank because even though the crappy are moving they're still going to suspend on structure that's available to the bait fish that they're chasing you know they're just like us if we run down the road and back and there's a bench down there we probably you know pop a squat on it and rest for a few minutes just like the crappy is going to feed all night long and then they're going to roll up to this brush pile they're going to roll up to this dock pylon and they're going to chill out there all day and rest up so they can feed again at night and stay away from the big predators like i was saying with the the first mistake the best way to combat this is you've got to actively look for fish look for shad popping the surface uh, look for you know herring on the bank you know eating bait fish uh, look for birds seagulls anything that can key you in that there's bait fish in this area and then you start fishing that area a little bit more thoroughly but I wouldn't spend a lot of time you know like you fish a dock 10-15 minutes and no bite I would suggest moving on to the next one now even though you find fish on your side scan it is you know middle of september end of september early october some of these fish just do not want to bite so do not spend a lot of time trying to make them bite when they're obviously not biting just keep moving these fish are swimming everywhere and i literally mean that guys if you had forward facing sonar find these bait balls and look under these bait balls it is crazy how spread out these fish will be There'll be one two pounder here, one pounder and a half are over here, one eight incher over here, and you can just pick and choose what you want. But if you don't have it, another good option is to tight line. I would, I would suggest tight lining with uh, minnows and swim baits, little small swim baits like the one I sell. And then if you're single pole, you know you gotta have that crappy man green little minnow. But yeah, guys, these are just. Two mistakes I see people doing in this early fall transition. We're gonna get more de deep into this fall transition. I've got a little sneaky, sneaky, sneaky video coming out in the next two days about a technique or an area of your lake that you just probably don't even think about fishing this time of year.